welcome to the Cotswolds, and more specifically Farriers Lake run by the Carp Society. A lake that I've had a ticket for for a couple of years now. I just fish it normally a little bit in the spring and a little bit in the autumn. Uh, and what an incredible lake it is. It's full of huge commons. Most of them are over 30 pounds with a good scattering over 40. There's a small group of mirrors that are hugely sought after in here as well. So the fishing is hugely interesting. Apart maybe from the last three or four days when I think one or two fish have been caught and the fishing has slowed down terribly. My timing couldn't have been worse. You join me 24 hours into probably a 72 hour session uh, and to say it's grim is, uh, is probably an understatement. But I have a theory, as long as I have a bait in the water there's every chance that I'm going to catch a fish. I reeled in early this morning after bite time. I've been up to the shops, replenished my supplies and, and hopefully having my lines out of the water for four or five hours have given the chance for the fish to move around a little bit unencumbered with lines lying all over the top of the weed. I'm going to reposition those rods now. I'm going to put a couple of spots of bait out there. Not a lot because I don't think they're eating a lot. And then I'm going to sit down and have a cup of tea and cross my fingers and any other part of my body that will willingly be crossed. Well, I am connected all to a carp. The problem is, as most of us, oh my goodness, gracious me, the weed is the problem. Slowly, inch by inch. There it is, solid as a rock, unfortunately. Damn. That's a lovely feeling. All the rain's got into my chest waders. I'm going into the pond, I may be some time. got ourselves a rather nice common car. Uh, it's probably going to take me about a week to get this weed out of my landing net uh, and as soon as I do I'll take a look at what's in it. It's actually a very good fish. <laughs> Always amazes me just how much a carp can cheer up the life of a carp fisherman. Absolutely amazing. First thing to do get all these, uh, these fins Flush to his body. Oh, all right, mate. Well, my opening piece of this section might have sounded a little bit gloomy and I think we all suffer with that uh, every now and again. It can almost seem impossible, but like I said, as long as I've got a hook bait in the water, there's every chance I'm going to catch myself a carp. Uh, what I didn't expect was after repositioning the hook baits for it to take off after, what, 25, 30 minutes, but that's carp fishing. That's the kind of thing that can happen. That's what keeps us coming back for more. And uh, whether it's whether I took the lines out of the water um, to go up to the shop and rest in the swim for five or six hours, I've got no idea. Uh, but I tend to think it helps. And uh, if that helps my confidence, then there's every chance I'm going to catch myself a carp that looks just like this. Oof. 33 pounds and 15 ounces and as you would have seen uh, from the fight weed is a problem it's a problem everywhere now with the restrictions on controlling it so you've got to make sure 
your tackle is man enough to land the fish and get them through it. Uh, mine did, as it always does. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to get a few stills of this stunning fish, uh, get her back in the pond, I'll reposition the hook bait, and you never know, we might just get another one. I've had a ticket for farriers now for 18 months. Um, I didn't fish it as soon as I got the ticket. I wanted the way I wanted the water for the autumn, and, and this was it. Uh, I had absolutely no idea uh, how productive it could be, and I caught an absolute cartload of 30 pound commons over 10 sessions. Uh, most of them were two or three days long, uh, topped by a lake record of 46 pound and 10 ounces, and it really, really doesn't get any better than that. I, I did a little bit this spring. Uh, I'm not a great lover of July and August, so I stayed away. I've come back uh, in September. Um, it's not as as productive as it was but it's made the fishing interesting and yes it's been a wonderful experience and uh, a real joy to fish in. The rigs that I use, oof, I only use two, uh, <coughs> I use a, a bottom bait rig, strip, six inches of strippable braid, a liner liner adapter, a size 7 or 8 SSC hook, a fairly long hair that gives me good separation from the hook and the hook bait, uh, and I normally, well, I, I always use it in conjunction with a PVA bag. I also use a stiff link pop-up. Uh, I do that because I think it's probably the most effective rig to use over a spread of boilers. I don't use it over if I'm using any pellets or predominantly small baits, but if I've got a good spread of 15 mil boilers out there, then I will have a 15 mil pop-up over the top. And as the saying goes, it works for me. I, I don't change technical things if I can possibly help it, but obviously the materials that I use help me construct the, the rigs that, that, that I want to create and, and hopefully improve uh, the mechanics of it. No, I can't think of one specific thing that, uh, you know, the liner liner adapters, uh, uh, anti-tangle sleeves, uh, the different textures in strippable braids all help to create uh, the presentation that I want. But probably the biggest thing is the ready tied chod rigs. And uh, they've amazed me that, uh, that somebody can tie rigs that are all exactly the same length and are absolutely perfect. Uh, and of all the technical things I use, they're probably uh, the greatest thing that, that I've changed on my own fishing. I don't tie the pop-up section of my stiff links anymore. The sun's just dipped over the horizon and uh, the temperature, unsurprisingly, for late September is, is plummeting quite rapidly, but I'm very, very confident of more fish. I repositioned both rods uh, after I had that, free, uh, that 33 earlier on uh, this afternoon, uh, and I'm not going to redo them before dark. You see a lot of people redo them at dark uh, and first lights, uh, probably times when, when you're most likely to get a bite. So they went down with a thump. They are exactly where I want them to be. A couple more spots of bait just to freshen those spots up uh, and hopefully any passing carp are, are going to have a little bit of interest. Uh, I'm going to have a couple of cups of tea now. Uh, watch the light fall out of the sky, uh, get my head down and hopefully the next time I see you I'll be holding a whacking great big carp.
It's the morning after the very uneventful night before. Uh, not a lot happened in the night. There was the odd bleak, which could quite easily have been bats bumping into my line for all I know. I, I heard and saw nothing in the times that I was awake. Uh, but things changed up a little bit this morning. The liner started shortly after first light, which was nice to see. And I think there were probably fish in and around that spot. I think what's happened though is they've broken up into much smaller groups. And until I get quite a fish, a few fish over those spots competing for the food, I'm probably not gonna get the bites. Uh, we did see a fish about 45 minutes, an hour ago, show right over the left hand rod, uh, but nothing, nothing came of it. I did have one occurrence where the bobbin pulled up tight. Uh, I had to, to, to reel the rod in and obviously see if there was anything there. There wasn't. Uh, but at least there's some kind of activity. I've spoken to one angler this morning, a little bit further down the lake, and he has seen absolutely nothing. However, there's enough going on here for, to make me want to stay. I've got the rods in now. I'll get them all ready to rock and roll for a little bit later on, but I want to use that time while I'm resting the swim. I don't want to sit on my, my bed chair and read a book or whatever and listen to the radio. I want to use that time to my advantage, go and talk to other anglers on the lake, see if anything else has happened, and also see if I can spot anything, anything that I can capitalize on and move on to. If I don't, then I'm back here and we'll get the rods back out and uh, again, We'll cross every part of our body if we can and hope we get another carp. And so to the rig I've been using so effectively at here at Farriers for the past couple of months. Now, there's a couple of rules here that are ardently adhered to and uh, the last thing I want to do is break any of those. And the first one is there's no leaders to be used here of any kind. That's casting leaders, snag leaders, leg core leaders, whatever you want to call them. You just have to use your main line all the way through. And I'm very lucky to be able to use trans khaki fluorocarbon main line. I use it in 16 pounds and it really is man enough for the job in weedy waters. It's been great uh, with all the fish that I've hooked here. I've been able to get them through that weed uh, and with, with no damage to the line either. So uh, that's one real bonus. Okay, the way that I set this up then, obviously no leader. The first thing I do is run a tapered mainline stopper up the main line itself and cover that with a little tapered bead and that's going to stop the rig flying up the main line and I can stop it at whatever depth I think it needs to be uh, relevant to the bottom I'm fishing over. The next thing to do is to run a flexi ring swivel up the main line and uh, I put the large ring of the swivel on the main line so it's big enough to go over anything that might get connected to the main line uh, should there be a breakage. Next up I run a Chod Heli buffer sleeve up the main line and it's there to protect the main line from the metal on the swivel. If you don't put something there, uh, that, that swivel could easily cut through your main line. Certainly under the pressure, you're gonna put that line under in weedy conditions. And finally, the lead itself. Now to ensure that sleeve doesn't come off, I leave the swivel on so there's plenty of, uh, plenty of swivel for it to grip hold of and a little bit of silicone tubing. It just makes sure that that swivel stays absolutely where I want it to be. Uh, and that's the lead setup. Uh, I use a three and a quarter ounce lead and I use that probably for 95% of my fishing wherever I go at whatever range I'm fishing at. Uh, I think flat pair of leads add to the shock effect uh, of any rig and I like them. Obviously for ultimate distances I may change that but that is 95% of my fishing. And on to the hook link. <clears throat> This is my version of a stiff link pop-up. Uh, I know there are several, but this is the one that's worked for me uh, on every water I've cast out in. 
Uh, the first thing is the boom section, five or six inches long, and it's made of 30 pound illusion fluorocarbon. It's very, very stiff, and it's very, very tough. One end goes to the hook link swivel itself, and I tie that with a simple overhand knot. It may be simple, but it's very, very effective in, the, in this stiff material, and it's never let me down. I leave a loop of maybe three quarters of an inch, and that gives some kind of lateral movement uh, to the rig itself. It almost gives it uh, a, another half a dimension, and uh, I'm sure it helps with the effectiveness and the mechanics of the rig. And then, to the swivel itself uh, and, and the chod rig. It is actually a chod rig, although I don't use them in, in that condition, I use it for the uplink of my stiff link pop-ups. And for the first time in my life, uh, I'm using rigs that somebody else has tied. Uh, I never ever thought they would happen, but they are so good and so effective. Uh, this is a five, size five SR hook <clears throat> to which I've attached my normal little pop-up arrangement. I can't really give you an answer, but for donkey's years, I've always put <clears throat> a little added bit of buoyancy on top of the pop-ups. Uh, it may be a sight bob. I'm not that certain that sight is so important to a carp, uh, but it gives me confidence. So it's always going to be there. Uh, and that's it, basically. Um, storing the rigs themselves, I take them out of the packaging and I put them on a chod, uh, in a chod bin. Uh, one that allows me, there's three different variations of the curve you can get, and I like the sharpest curve possible. Um, and it allows me to have everything ready to rock and roll and out of the packaging, uh, and I can do it as quickly as possible. And finally, just to keep that curve in your hook link, if you're on the move, packing up or whatever, get your hook and put it back through the flexi ring swivel. One, it stops it catching on anything, pulling it and losing the curve uh, in the hook link, and it also keeps that curve in it. And uh, once you get to the other end, pop it out, cast it out in the pond, and uh, over a scat and a boil is, I think, that's the best rig possible. recast my rods um, the winds died down quite considerably from when I tried to reposition them earlier on today uh, but they needed to be out there through that bite time and I'd rather have a bait out there that I wasn't quite sure about uh, while the carp may be feeding than have nothing there at all. Um, we went through that period uh, it's so windy whether I was getting any liners uh, that we didn't see any fish um, so I've repositioned them, I've got about 14 hours left and uh, this really is the last roll of the dice. I have to remember that yesterday afternoon I caught a 33 pound 15 ounce common carp and uh, they are still such impressive animals even in a world of, uh, of big carp. And, and what I'm trying to say there is, is a lot of people will, you know, that will do. They don't want to disturb the water by casting a few more times and I'd rather cast 50 times and know that that is presented absolutely perfect uh, especially if it's going to stay out there for 14 15 hours the the mess about with two or three casts and that'll do no sometimes it won't do it has to be as you want it you're just not going to have the confidence levels and uh, you're just not going to be happy with your fishing um yes i've caught a very very nice common carp i wouldn't have like another
This is absolutely the eleventh hour of Starfire. So just sat there having a brew, and uh, I thought it's absolutely stuck fast in the week. I've seen more in the past ten minutes than I've seen for the past two days, and this is absolutely stuck in there. Considering if I knew where a bailiff was, I want to get it. <laughs> what to do? I need a bailiff now. I want that boat. <laughs> oh, this is awful. Um, there is a boat on site, but you can't use it without a bailiff, or thankfully. Bob the bailiff, who's just trundling in behind me in the boat, was standing on a far bank with a bit of hand waving, a bit of shouting. He's brought the boat over, so uh, I can go out after the fish, which uh, probably is quite exciting uh, viewing for you. But I will be doing so with my heart in my mouth. It's uh, it's a very fraught situation, but uh, here we go. Let's uh, we're going to see if we can bag him. It's unbelievable. I've been stood here. Even while I've been playing this fish, I've probably seen more fish showing um, than I have in all the time I've been here. So, uh, yeah, somebody's going to have a bit of a beano when I've disappeared, but uh, we'll go and see if we can find him. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's a 21 pound 6 ounce mirror and to a lot of people that just might be standard fare but to me when one in 25 of the fish I've caught out of farriers is a mirror uh, this is truly exciting. Uh, he's a real old boy, he's got a few scars on him and uh, he's obviously been around the block a few times and uh, it means the world to me. You can't odds what's going to pick your up bait up when you've cast it 60, 70 yards out in the lake, uh, but to catch uh, such a rare fish as this is a real honour. What an absolute character, and as I say, a, a proper old boy. This week has probably been the worst I've known here, uh, but to end it uh, with a very rare mirror carp is, is a real honour, and uh, thank you very much, sir. And to get a boat battle in as well, just to uh, make things a little bit more exciting, was, uh, was pretty cool too. Absolutely fantastic. No better way, and uh, always great to have that last lingering look at your prize and uh, slip him off back to fight another day. Thank you so much, you've uh, made all the effort very, very worth it. Go on. Well. I can't help myself, light my fire. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm not often one for excuses, things happen because they happen, but it has been the toughest week at Farrier as anybody can remember for quite a long time. I think things are, the, are just about to change here, fish are starting to show, and they're obviously starting to get caught. It's been tough, it's been hard, but that's one of the vagaries of carp fishing. That's what keeps us coming back for more, and that's why I'll be back here next week for a little bit more of the same.